Well, good evening, everyone. I've been wanting to do a live bedtime story for several weeks now. And this evening just presented itself as a wonderful opportunity for that. So, what is the purpose of our bedtime stories? So that you can go to sleep thinking about the power of God. And tonight, our bedtime story is a story by Lillian B. Yeomans from this book entitled Healing Treasury that includes all four of her books. And this particular story is called The Praise Cure. And she begins by telling about a friend of hers that spent thousands of dollars going to Austria to take a health cure. And how Dr. Yeomans is familiar with many health cures, but she didn't find any of them that worked as well as the praise cure. So we have dialogue here from Dr. Yeoman's friend, and we have her own words. And I will try to distinguish between the two of them as we go down through our story. Father, I just thank you tonight for these wonderful testimonies and stories from the life of Lillian B. Yeomans a woman who herself experienced your power through reading your word. And Father, I thank you that she never withdrew from the wonderful testimony and demonstration of Jesus, the healer. And so, Father, I thank you that this little story will encourage the faith and the minds and the emotions and the bodies of those who hear it. And Father, they will add the praise cure to their medicine cabinet, their spiritual medicine cabinet. And Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Dr. Yeomans. I have administered a many good cures and seen a good many administered and heard about a good many more. I remember a friend of mine telling me of a cure that she took, but whatever the results might have been, they were never long lasting, as she repeated it every year. And, she complained, it was very unpleasant. The friend. It was horribly expensive as well, she said. But as I had plenty of money in those days, that didn't matter so much. But the unpleasantness of it I shall never forget. Dr. Yeomans. What was there so unpleasant about it? Her friend. Well, to begin with, I had to go to Austria for it. For only there is a certain kind of mineral water found, which my doctor says my constitution needs. It is horribly nasty. Tastes like sulfur matches and rotten eggs to judge by the smell. When I got there, I was put in a little attic room and had to be thankful to get it, the place was so crowded. It was a room such, such that I should not dare anyone in America to sleep in, not even a tramp. 
Then we were awakened in the morning at five o'clock by a sort of clapper that made a very loud and grating noise. At the very first stroke, we had to leap up. Huh, Dr. Yeomans, why such haste? The friend, because if we didn't get up immediately, we should be late, and that meant no breakfast. That was part of the cure, getting up early, hurrying. Dr. Yeomans, oh, I understand. I suppose, then, you hastily took your bath and ran down to a well-prepared meal. Ha, <laughs> the friend, that's all you know about it. There was no bathroom, and already blue with cold, I had to wash in a hand basin in ice water. Ha, <laughs> honestly, I have sometimes even found a thin film of ice on the water in the jug. Then... I had to dress as quickly as I could in all my outdoor things, including heavy walking boots, and put on a warm wrap. I then dashed downstairs to join the procession on the way to breakfast. Dr. Yeomans, why, where was the breakfast? The friend, oh, oh, miles and miles away. That was part of the cure. The road was very rough. I think that was part of the cure, too, to shake up your liver. Well, Dr. Yeoman says, I supposed you arrived at last and went into a building where they had a huge open fireplace with great logs burning. And you sat down in front of, of its grateful warmth to a substantial German breakfast, steaming hot. Ah, <laughs> the friend, that's all you know about it. No, when we reached our destination, we were at a sort of fountain, surrounded by a platform, which was always slippery and damp, where we formed in line and at last reached the man who dispensed the water. When you gave your name, he turned to a file to see how many glasses you had to drink, and he handed them to you one by one, watching to see that you consumed every last drop of each. Then, and not till then, he handed you a ticket that entitled you to breakfast, and you made a mad rush with the rest of the patients to a sort of garden. Only it had no flowers in it, only some discouraged shrubs. Here there were some small tables, <clears throat> for we always took our meals in the open. That was part of the cure. On the small tables were rolls of some kind of black bread. Oh, but I tell you, it tasted good. And the only trouble was the rolls were very small. Dr. Yeomans, but you could eat plenty of them, I suppose. Oh, the woman says, maybe you're a doctor, but it's plain to me that you know nothing about cures. My friend said almost contemptuously, no, we were only allowed two rolls at the most. Some patients got only one all the time they were there. Once in a great while, some of us got an egg each or a very thin slice of cold meat with our roll. But that was only by the doctor's special orders. Then we had a cup of very weak coffee with milk. It was hot and was the only warm thing we encountered from the time we got up until dinner time. They usually had some very thin soup for dinner and two kinds of vegetables, very small helpings, and some days a tiny, tiny bit of meat or flesh, fish. No dessert, except on gala days, an apple. Supper wasn't worth mentioning and often I was deprived of it altogether. This ordeal was considered a great cure, 
and you had to apply months beforehand to be sure of getting in. And counting your traveling expenses, doctor bills, and board, it all came to be very high. You know, as I read down through that, and I don't mean to disparage the medical systems of our day, but all the things that women woman went through to get a cure. Eating this, getting up at this time, going here, drinking this many glasses, man prescribed cures. And even today, when we go to a medical doctor, he prescribes a cure. Whether he's giving us a prescription we have to take so many many times per day, whether it's so many treatments that we have to have. I just saw a lot of parallels between Dr. Yeoman's friend and the cure that she submitted herself to, the rigor of it, and the cure that we submit ourselves to in these days also. The rigor of them is what I'm speaking of. But the praise cure, there's no rigor in it like that. <laughs> That's why I'm smiling already, because I know where this story is going, and I'm excited to see all of you delivered from the rigors of man-made cures. Dr. Yeomans goes on now. That's one kind of cure, the one that her friend experienced. That's one kind of cure, and there have been and are many others. Now, this was written many years ago, but still today. You can find all over the Internet various types of cures and cleanses and other things. So these things are still in operation today. That's one kind of cure, and there have been and are many others, as the grape cure where patients are allowed to eat all the ripe grapes they can get, but nothing else of any kind. Then there's the barefoot cure. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, heavens. If we would go back to the olden days and read some of the things that they had for cures, I'm sure we'd all be chuckling just a little bit. Then is then the barefoot cure, where they go barefoot. And there's the hot mud cure. No, they didn't have to eat it. They wallowed in it. And I am far, she says, from saying that nothing is accomplished by these and other kindred methods. But I do say that the cure of which I am going to speak is the only sure cure. I am far from saying that nothing is accomplished by these and other kindred methods. But I do say that the cure of which I am going to speak is the only sure cure. The cure that I am going to speak of is the most expensive one ever known. But the price has been paid by another. Oh, now we're getting to the story. Hallelujah. Yes, the cure of which I'm going to speak is the most expensive one ever known. But the price was paid by another for it was purchased, not with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and spot. 1 Peter 1.19 And the poorest person may enjoy its fullest benefits. I call it 
the praise cure because it is most readily applied by simply singing yourself into it. <laughs> hmm. Oh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Oh, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalms 100 verse 4. You know, you can sing yourself and shout yourself into and through things that you can't get into or through any other way. You know, you can sing yourself and shout yourself into things and through things that you can't get into or through any other way. <laughs> there was an old Presbyterian elder, this is a wonderful story she tells, who was terribly opposed to anybody making noise over his religion. He thought religion should be like the newest style of typewriters absolutely noiseless and with a guarantee to that effect. <laughs> he had one daughter, however, a most saintly girl who had so much glory in her soul that she occasionally boiled over with it. Oh, he labored with her to no effect for it seemed as though she could not help it. And though she hated to grieve her old father, she just burst out in praise. At last, one day, the old man came to the end of his well-spent life. And as he felt himself entering the valley of the shadow of death, he had a glimpse of the glory that is to be revealed. And to the amazement of his family, he gave one shout of great joy and cried out for his shouting girl to come. Oh, he said, come along, daughter, and help me shout my way clear through to home and glory. Come along, daughter, and help me shout my way through clear home to glory. And that is exactly what she did though the tears were streaming down her face. Oh, and we can stand on God's word for salvation and healing after we have met God's conditions and grounded every weapon of rebellion. Oh, she's talking about bringing our lives into line with God's word as we're standing on it for our healing. She says we can praise our way through to perfect manifested victory. We can praise our way through to perfect manifested victory. <clears throat> this I call the praise cure, and it never fails when the praise is the outflowing of a heart resting on God's unchanging word. Oh, I love that. This I call the praise cure, and it never fails when the praise is the outflow of a heart that is resting on God's word. Oh, now she's going to tell another story. A missionary to China that stayed at the healing home of Mrs. Carrie Judd Montgomery in Oakland, California. This missionary had the most wonderful healing of smallpox while on the field by the application of the praise cure. Now think about the seriousness of smallpox and compare it to your condition. This missionary fearlessly nursed a sister missionary 
who had the disease, even though she had not been vaccinated. She was standing on God's promise that no plague would come nigh her dwelling. Then, a very bad case of confluent smallpox, that was what it looked like to the doctors, came out on her. And she did not know what to do. So she asked the Lord. And he told her to sing and praise him for his faithfulness to his word. You know, a lot of us today, if we'd been standing on the word, no plague will come nigh our dwelling, and then something would have come upon us, we'd have been asking why, instead of asking the Lord, what shall I do? Hallelujah. We can learn some things from these old timers, these old schoolers. <laughs> well, they isolated her and told her to lie quiet. But she said, if she didn't praise God, the very stones would cry out. So she sang and sang and she praised and praised. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Obey God, everyone. Obey the Lord. Whatever instructions he gives you regarding getting your healing manifested, obey them. So she sang and sang and praised and praised. And the doctor said he feared for her life. That the case was serious and awful complications threatened. Oh, but she just kept right on. Praising and praising and singing and singing. The doctor said she was evidently delirious. But that he had so little help that he couldn't restrain her. And she kept on. She sang and sang and praised and praised. They told her that if by any chance she recovered, she would be disfigured for life. And she sang and sang and praised and praised louder than ever. <laughs> they asked, why do you pray so much? She answered, because I have so many pox on me. God shows me that I must praise him for each one separately. And she kept right at it. The Lord had shown her a vision of two baskets, one containing her praising, which was half full. The other contained the smallpox, and it was full. And the Lord told her that the praise basket must be filled so that it would outbalance the other. So she kept at it. Her songs and shouts were so spirit-filled that they were contagious. And the Christian nurses couldn't resist joining in. So they kept the place ringing. At last, the Lord showed her that the praise basket was full, hallelujah, and overflowing. She saw it sink and the smallpox basket rise in the air. And in a moment, as it seemed, the eruption and all attendant symptoms vanished, leaving no trace in any way of so much as a single scar. Oh, perhaps that may seem almost too much to believe for some, but I can furnish, Dr. Yeoman says, from my own personal experience, a case where the smallpox eruption disappeared instantaneously in answer to believing prayer and the application of the praise cure. See, think about the power of God. Think about the pox. Think about the contagion. Think about the attendant symptoms. And then think about the power that makes it disappear instantly. Whew, that's what 
You're drawing on that power as you're seeing your healing manifest. As you're beginning to speak to your circumstances and situations. As you're getting understanding of how to command mountains to be removed and call things that be not as though they are. This power that causes smallpox to disappear instantly is the power that moves your mountain. It's the power that creates wellness in your body, restores your organs. Hallelujah. Who power. What's the purpose of our bedtime story? So you can go to sleep thinking about the power of God. Whew. Think about these stories. Once we finish them, are you finished listening? Don't turn them off and let your mind go back to thinking about your illness or your symptoms. Or saying, well, why doesn't that happen in my case? The Lord just wants you to think about his power. It will happen. Hallelujah. He's giving us answers here to see your manifestations. Dr. Yeomans goes on. <clears throat> One evening, we were about to open the meeting at a mission where I was working. When a man rushed into the hall and asked to have a few moments of private conversation with me. After I led him to the prayer room, he said, Dr. Yeomans, my wife has just broken out all over with smallpox. How do you know it's smallpox? I inquired. Why, we had a doctor who said so and told us not to stir from the house that he was going to get the health doctor and have the place quarantined without a moment's delay. But as soon as the doctor left my, our house, my wife said, run down to the mission, ask Dr. Yeomans to pray, and I am sure God will clear this plague off my skin and out of my blood. I am sure God will clear this plague off my skin and out of my blood. Many of you are dealing with skin issues, blood issues, Think about the power of God that cleansed the smallpox out of her blood and the pox off her skin. Whew. Glory to God. She goes on. Well, let me, I better read that last letter line again. Ask Dr. Yeomans to pray, and I am sure God will clear this plague off my skin and out of my blood. So right there on the spot, we applied the praise cure. <laughs> and the brother ran home to find his wife without a single trace of the disease. A little later, the doctor returned with the health doctor and was unmercifully teased because there wasn't a pox in sight nor any symptom of the disease. Yes, the praise cure works every time, and it is not unpleasant. Rather, it is delightful. The cost of it has been met for us by another, and it is available this moment to each of us. Are you ready to begin it? The last clause of 1 Peter 1.8 tells us exactly how to begin. It says, Believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, just believe what God says that Jesus has done for you, body, soul, and spirit. Think about it. Talk about it. Sing about it. Shout about it. And the praise cure has begun, has begun. Hallelujah. Believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Just believe what God says Jesus has done for you, body, soul, and spirit. Think about it. Talk about it. Sing about it. Shout about it. And the praise cure has begun. Oh, 
You are not to take it just once a year, but all the time. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 34, 1. The Psalms, the book of praise inspired by the Holy Spirit, has been used by the people of God in all ages, and which Jesus himself used, and they are full of this praise cure. Just observe the first five verses of Psalms 103. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know what part of you is afflicted. Say it's your blood. When it says all that is within me, bless his holy name. See your blood blessing his holy name. See your blood singing his praises. Whatever member of your body is afflicted, see the afflicted member praising. See the afflicted member shouting. See the afflicted member saying, I'm healed. When it says, all that is within me. That's what the Holy Spirit said to me right then when I said that. He said, tell them to picture their afflicted member praising me. Shouting, singing, healthy organs and tissues do that. Get them started. How, what is your member that has the problem? Use your imagination. We've talked about imagination. Picture that member in your imagination, shouting and praising God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And then it goes on. Who forgives, who forgives all thine iniquities? Who heals all, all? He heals all my diseases just as he forgives all my iniquities. <laughs> Oh, the next one. Who redeems thy life from destruction. I don't know where you are at on this journey that the sickness or illness or infirmity or genetic disorder has taken you down. How far, how long you've been on it going toward destruction of the body. But this verse tells me that the Lord redeems your body from going down that road to destruction. Who redeems thy life. That's your whole being, spirit, soul, and body. Redeems your life from destruction, your entire being restored to wellness. <clears throat> who crowns you, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his, his benefits, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, oh, life words, praise words, health words, God's word, fills your mouth with good things, not the doctor's report, not what your body is saying, the report of your body, not the report of your friends. Fills your mouth with good things. Hallelujah. Hang out with those that fill your mouth with good things. Make them your companions. And then next it says, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I said, oh yes, Lord. Thank you for that verse. Thank you for Psalms 103. Thank you, you forgive all my iniquities and heal all my diseases. Thank you, goodness and mercy, follow me all the days of my life. 
Thank you, you crown me with loving kindness. Thank you, you refill my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Whew. We're about through. One more paragraph. I personally knew a man who was dying of acute tuberculosis. Now think of that and compare that to your situation. This man was dying the last hours of life with acute tuberculosis. I knew, I personally knew of a man who was dying of acute tuberculosis of the lungs who praised himself into perfect, rugged health that lasted a lifetime. His remarkable recovery and good health was the result of following the words of this psalm. Psalm 103. Oh, you, his remarkable recovery and good health was the result of following the words of this psalm. Oh, she says, begin right now. You can't afford to postpone it another moment. Oh, tread the young lions under your feet by the praise of faith. Whatever is devouring you, it's like a young lion. Well, tread it under your feet with the praise of faith. Oh, it has never failed, and it never will. <laughs> oh, I personally knew a man who was dying of acute tuberculosis of the lungs, who praised himself into perfect, rugged health, that lasted a lifetime. His remarkable recovery and good health was the result of following the words of this psalm. Begin now. You can't afford to postpone it by so much as a moment. Tread the young lions that are devouring you under your feet by the praise of faith. It has never failed and it never will. The praise cure. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Say that with me. Just repeat it after me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all, all, all that is within me, Bless his holy name. Blood, praise him. Skin, praise him. Lungs, praise him. Circulatory system, praise him. Respiratory system, praise him. Legs and thighs, praise him. Joints and tendons, praise him. Living praise, let me be a living fire for your glory, King of Kings. A fire of praise. <laughs> oh, where are we here? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget, oh, I'm all mixed up now. Whew, Jesus help me. Bless the Lord. Can we start over again? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Put your hand on yourself. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not. I won't forget. I will not forget his benefits. Whatever report I get, I'll not forget the benefits. Whatever my symptoms say, I won't forget my benefits, his benefits that he's given me. Oh, Lord, you forgive all my iniquities. 
you heal all my diseases. Hallelujah. All disease that may be operating in me, be healed in Jesus' name. Be normal body, normal. Health, healing, wholeness to you, soundness from the top of my head, the top of my head to the soles of my feet. There is no unsound member in my body. Thank you, Lord. You crown me with loving kindness. And you pour out upon me tender mercies. Lord, you satisfy my mouth with good things. Oh, thank you for giving me your word. It fills my mouth with good things. Oh, thank you, Father, that as I eat your word, meditate your word, keep it before mine eyes and in the midst of my heart, it renews my youth like the eagles. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. If you know that song, sing it with me. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. For he has done great things. Yes, he has done great things. He has done great things, bless his holy name. Oh, yes, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Yes, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. And I love him so, I love him so, Lord, I love you so, you're so good to me, and you are healing me, yes, you are healing me. You are healing me, you're so good to me. <laughs> oh, Satalama Korean Nalama Sundaramoshata. God is so good, He's so good. Say it to me. God bless you all. I pray that this little story and the power that you see demonstrated in it, you will connect to your situation and you will go to sleep thinking about the power of God and practicing the praise cure. God bless you all. Good night. <laughs>